On September 11th, the world was changed forever when the unthinkable happened. As the fires burned and the sounds of sirens pierced the air, hundreds of New York City's bravest answered the call. They did so not for fame or fortune, but for the love of humanity. Courageous and determined, they did what they had always done, respond to those who needed their help the most. Countless numbers of survivors were spared because of their selfless bravery. When the towers crumbled, America was dealt a staggering blow. Within minutes, thousands of people, along with nearly 350 heroic firefighters, perished in an image that will be burned into our minds forever. These were valiant firefighters, willing to put their lives on the line so that others could live. In the weeks prior to the tragedy, we were privileged to work with and profile many of the men that are now lost. The firefighters you will see in the following tribute are all victims of this disaster, yet their words live on. This entire series is dedicated to them and all the innocent people who lost their lives in the World Trade Center tragedy. Chaos is a fire. The fire service? I guess it goes back <laughs> many years to when I was a kid. Uh, the apartment building I lived in, uh, we had uh, over the years I was there, it ended up having three different fires. So I was carried out as a child uh, by uh, by a firefighter. Um, so I have fond memory, you know, I have memories to go back to, you know, all of a sudden, you know, in the smoke, this big guy comes up, grabs me, and carries me down the stairs. My father was a fireman and a fire lieutenant in this company. So I grew up, me and my brothers uh, used to ride along as kids. So we grew up kind of wanting to be firemen like our dad. and history and it's a good feeling you know a good bunch of guys uh, I mean the whole fire service is camaraderie and a lot of jocularity and you know but, but when the uh, when the tone alarm goes off everybody gives 110 percent Kiss him. Yes. I've been on 19 years. I kiss my father every time I see him. I make you take that test. My sons are on the job. Uh, my son Joe is over in uh, Ladder 4, which is in the uh, theater district, and uh, we catch fires sometimes together, which is a good thing and it's fun. And my other son, Mike, he's in the fire patrol in, uh, in Brooklyn. Stay right there just for a minute. They'll get a ladder to you. You're fine right there, okay? Just stay up against the window. Sleep. I never sleep. You can't beat the action in Manhattan. It's just, it's tops. It's just the emergency work, the fires, the buildings. It's just, you don't find this anywhere in the world. It's probably one of the most difficult because the unknowns in the buildings. Um, but every place in Manhattan is a challenge. You know, everyone gives us a lot of respect because they always see us running into the burning buildings as everyone else is leaving. It's often been said, you know, firemen are little kids that never grew up. You know, we like jumping on this big red, white truck with the flashing lights and going down, and then everybody likes us and everybody waves to us. But you have to keep in mind, you go down to headquarters, there's 700 something names of guys died doing this job. You don't 
show the fear like you would when you're a younger guy. But you always have that that keeps you honest. It, it is reality, you know, as far as in the city of New York that you are going to uh, lose, you know, lose some of your fellow brothers, you know, battling uh, the Red Devil. You just have to keep going. You know, rely on your training, instincts, the knowledge passed down from other firefighters. And, you know, just uh, luck of the draw, I guess. Sounds very cliche, you should kiss your old lady goodbye when you leave and you might not come home, but it's real. I mean, wherever you put that, each individual guy puts that in a different, in a different spot in his head, you know, but it's always there. And if it's not, I think you're kidding yourself or you're not being honest with yourself. Kids love the idea. They understand what I do is dangerous. They, you know, they're concerned, but they're also proud. It's, uh, and uh, there's nothing more special than that, you know. They know that, you know, daddy might not come home, you know, we don't, you know, it's a, that's a possibility. Sometimes you, you could have the most experienced guys and everything on the scene. It, it's just there's certain situations that are outside of our control. Just when you start to feel confident in yourself, this job has a way of humbling you. Just when you think you know what you're doing, you get into a curveball. But it's, it's there, I mean, you know, you're going into something that's totally out of control. It's a second family. You're with them more than 40 hours a week. And you know, we go through difficult times together, and it's just like a family does at home. You have good times, you have bad times, and you share those times together. <laughs> the job pretty much stays the same because the breed of men are the same, and they're a good breed of men, and they're good men. From, from our brothers is worth a million dollars for a job like that.